Let me actually show you how to actually get better performance in Valorant. Like there's so many guides out there telling you to enable your game mode on Windows and all of that. And that's like the whole entire guide. Like thank you so much for nothing, I guess. I'm gonna show you actual Windows tweaks which are going to help you out, like enabling the right XMP profile, the right Nvidia profile inspector settings, and also showing you why you should actually cap your FPS in Valorant. And not at the refresh rate which your monitor has, but actually slightly underneath. Let me explain all of this in this video. But guys, always make sure that you create a restore point. Before you apply any sort of tweaks from the internet guys i know i have 140k subscribers here on this channel so just in case if there's something you can always revert but let's actually get into this and let me show you how to get more fps and lower input delay in valorant so what we're going to need in the first place is the nvidia profile inspector since we have way more advanced settings in here than the official nvidia application which just came out a bunch of weeks ago you can find this tool on the official github link which is also by the way linked in the video description with the latest version and there you can get it nvidia profile inspector.zip just simply click onto it and you can see the download is going to begin. Once you extracted the tool onto your desktop, just simply double click and click under yes and you can see that it's going to launch. We have in the first place here under profiles now global driver profile setting, which is going to change this for all games on your PC, which I maybe wouldn't recommend you if you want to do some more specific tweaking for Valorant. So therefore what we're going to do is basically switch up Valorant and there is already the preset which we're going to select and then should say Valorant.exe in this green bar. This is super important. This means that it actually found the game. Now once you get it selected guys, there are a bunch of options and I'm going to guide you for everything. In the first place, we're gonna look under sync and refresh and every single g-sync option you want to actually completely disable turn off force off force off 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 just let me make sure that everything which says g-sync is completely turned off next up we have maximum pre-rendered frames guys and this one gets kind of tricky because usually this one is on usd 3d application setting but for me personally i put it on one this is going to result in a lot less input delay but it's also a lot more hardware demanding for your pc so therefore if you're currently running valorant on a potato to mid-end pc i wouldn't recommend you that make sure to put it again under the UC3 application settings, but if you have a somehow capable gaming PC, I would take a slight decrease in performance for actually a lot less input delay. That's just me though, so therefore try it out for yourself. Then preferred refresh rate of course on the highest available guys, super important, and vertical sync completely on forced off, and vertical sync smooth AFR behavior as well on off. Then we're going to continue until we can see anti-aliasing FXA enabled which should be on off, and FXA enabled preferred by Nvidia on disallowed. Gamma correction should be on on, transparency multi-sampling should be on disabled, the same as well with transparency super sampling which should also be on off slash multi sampling and then on MSAA mode, this should be on application control. This one you want to actually select in Valorant directly. The next up, anti-strophic filter optimization you want to keep on on, and the same with anti-strophic filter sample optimization. This one also on on. Then this option for LOD bias should be on allow, and texture filter and quality should be on high performance. And all you gotta do is click under apply changes, and you're already good to go. This is going to let your Valorant run a lot smoother on any PC basically with Nvidia GPU, and you're already chilling and good to go. The next thing I want to talk about guys is your memory. I see way too many people who maybe just bought a PC, build it themselves, and their RAM is actually not utilizing their maximum potential. Why this is important is because if you have, let's say, 32 gigs of RAM, right, and you bought them and they're running actually up to 7200 megahertz like mine, but they're only running on 6000 because you never actually set it up, this can make a huge difference in cast latency and overall system latency, basically also ensuring that your Valorant runs a lot smoother, it's running better, you have less stutter and all of that. So therefore, it's actually very important that you always check that you run the maximum megahertz your RAM can offer. Of course, RAM is always different, right? You have DD DDR4, DDR5 RAM, different speeds and all of that. But once you actually take a look at your specific RAM and Google it, you can see how much megahertz it can actually maximum run. First of all, you need to restart your PC and get into the BIOS, guys. It always should say on the bottom something like press F12, F11 or something like that to enter the BIOS. So therefore, just simply make sure to figure out which button it is for you. It's always different for different PCs. Once you're in here, this is now the BIOS, guys. You can see we have a bunch of data, all of that. But what we actually want to focus on, first of all, is if yours is set to something like easy mode on the top, and most likely it's going to sit here somewhere, you want to make sure that you go, first of all, under advanced mode. Now in here, we have something which is going to be called tweaker or advanced settings. It's completely different, guys. I can only give you an overall idea of this because actually every manufacturer has like a sort of different layout, but you can find it. I just want to show you what you're looking for. Once you're here in the tweaker, you can then see here on this menu that it actually says, you know, DDR5 XMP booster 
And this is exactly what we're looking for, XMP. This is what we need, guys. XMP is it called, this is what we're looking for. Then you can see here on the right side, we have a bunch of weird data, right? Like, I'm just gonna click this up. It's gonna look very confusing. You're probably right now like, oh my God, what is this? Let me help you to understand this in one minute, okay? First of all, here on the right side, we actually now see that our modules are from Corsair and the actual manufacturer is Hynix. It's a Korean company producing RAM sticks, all of that, you know what I'm saying? So therefore, we already know, ah, we're looking for Hynix. All of these other ones here, they actually fall away. Micron, Samsung, it's like a very long list, they don't matter. For me personally, I know from the RAM which I bought that its maximum frequency is 7200 megahertz. That's at least what it says on the picture, that's what it says on the package, that's what it says if you look into your purchase history where you bought your RAM and PC and everything like that. It should be also on the receipt and all of that. For me, it's 7200 megahertz. So you might be confused right now because there it says also Hynix XMP 7200 megahertz. So which one is the right one? Good question, right? Well, let me explain you guys. I have 48 gigs of RAM, so half of 48 is 24. That's how I already know, okay, this is the right one. This is the one which I need. It also says behind it the cast latency, but that all doesn't really matter as of right now. All we gotta find here now is 7200, which is both of these here, but there it actually says 16, and I don't have 32 gigs of RAM. You know, it's gonna showcase like half of it for one module. Obviously, I have two modules with 48 gigs, so therefore half of it is 24, so I'm already chilling. Once I found it, I also checked it out. Okay, the cast latency 36 is also all right. That's exactly what it also says on the packaging, guys. It's Always like this small number behind CL. That's what it should say. For me, it's 36, 7200 megahertz. So I know, okay, this is the right profile. Just simply make sure that you Google your RAM and it should tell you exactly how much it is, how much maximum megahertz you have, and this number here. If it's a CL36, 32, 30 maybe even, or even a lot lower if you're on DDF4 RAM with like less megahertz. Basically, the higher this number is here, the higher is probably also most likely your CL going to be. But yeah, this is exactly the one which we're looking for, and I actually already applied it in here. So therefore, all we gotta do is click on the save and save and exit. This is how you make sure that your RAM is running at its maximum speed, guys. And actually, the speed differences are insane. So the first thing I wanna talk about, which I feel like a lot of people actually don't talk about, is how important it is to cap your frames in Valorant. Let's say as an example, if you have a 240 hertz monitor like me, I actually like to cap my FPS on 237. You might ask yourself, why would you do that? And why are you disabling the NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency mode? Well, actually, guys, capping your FPS in Valorant gives you way more consistent frame time, which also helps the Valorant engine with better synchronization or in other words, better synchronized rendering and processing cycles. I'm gonna simply explain it. If you cap your FPS, you don't have this variability between your FPS going up all the way and then dropping, which gives it more stability and is gonna give you a way better input delay overall. And on top of that, you even avoid screen tearing, so it has a ton of benefits. For me, as mentioned, since I'm playing on 240Hz, I actually kept it on 237. I would highly recommend you to try this out and also actually disable the NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency mode. Play a bunch of games and let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. For the overall graphics quality, I gotta say Valorant is a very simple game. The lower you go with your graphics, the more FPS you're gonna get, just like most shooters out there. That's why material quality is on low, texture quality on low, detail quality on low, UI quality on low, why net also on off, and VSync as well turned off, guys. You don't want to utilize VSync unless you're playing on 60 or 75 Hz monitors, maybe. For anti-aliasing, of course, the more you're gonna put it up, the sharper your picture is going to be. Many people just want to go for the maximum FPS, so therefore fully disable it. For me, I gotta say, guys, MSAA 2X is like the sweet spot, you know, between like visuals and performance, so therefore I enable it. And dystrophic filtering just focuses on texture, so therefore I don't really care too much, so therefore I keep it on 1x. Improved clarity is also on off, experimental sharpening as well on off, bloom on off, distortion on off, and cast shadows since they do not give you a competitive advantage, since it doesn't actually evolve player models or anything which a player does, it really doesn't matter, turn it off. And if you may be struggling with high ping or packet loss in Valorant, I want to recommend you to try out GR Booster with the link in the video description for absolutely free. You get a free day trial version where you can basically try it out in Valorant. GF Booster is the number one gaming VPN, making sure that you have the least amount of ping possible. They even have a packet loss protection service, and they're going to make sure to look for the best DNS service in your near guys so that you have the least amount of ping in Valorant. It's very easy to use. All you gotta do is basically select the game which you wanna play, which is of course Valorant, select the right region, and GF Booster is gonna do everything for you automatically. There is no purchase, and as mentioned with my link in the video description, you can try it out for absolutely free with the full-on functions. In the first place, guys, I want you to search up a 
performance until you can find adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. And in here, we're going to set up our virtual memory, guys. This one is super important, especially on PCs with eight to 16 gigs of RAM. Once you find it here, virtual memory, you're gonna click under change. Make sure to uncheck automatically manage paging file sizes of all drives, go under custom size. And now I'm going to show you how to properly calculate this. Let's say as an example, if you have 16 gigs of RAM, you're going to type in 16 times 1024, since one gig of RAM is 1024 Mbit, which means that your initial size should be 16384. For the maximum size, you're just gonna multiply it by times two, so that you have 32, so that you have 32,768 for a maximum size. You can check this in your test manager. For me, you can see guys, I'm running currently 48 gigs of RAM. That's why my initial size is 49,000 and my maximum size 98,000. As mentioned, calculate it just with this formula for how much RAM you have. If you have four gigs of RAM, you're gonna type in there four times 1024 and on and on. Then just simply click under set and click under okay and you're good to go. Additionally, you can also go under visual effects and make sure that you go for adjust for best performance and also enable show thumbnails instead of icons. This is how I have it so that you actually see previous of videos and click on OK and we're good to go with the first step. Next step, super important guys, that we select the right power plan. For this one, I want to tell you for mid to low end PCs, you want to utilize high performance. If you're actually on a higher end PC, you're going to select alternative performance, which for you might not be available straight up, but don't be worried, I'm going to show you how to enable it. All you got to do is search up CMD, right click onto it and run it as administrator, click under yes. And then from the video description, you're going to paste in the following code. Power CFG, duplicate seam, and then the following code and press enter. Now the next time you go into your edit power plan option, go into power options on the top, you should then see the ultimate performance mode being available. If you use anything, then the newer Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 from at least like the third to fifth generation, or at least like a DDR4 version i5, you should be good to go to utilize the ultimate performance mode. For this next step now guys, I made myself two specific tools which are going to help you to basically optimize your PC with one single click. This one here is going to disable a bunch of the most unnecessary Windows services, which are all really hardware demanding, especially something like Windows Search, which kind of gives you like a more advanced search up. In your Windows here, you know, when you search up something and it gives you like internet recommendations and all of that. Also something like tablet input services or fax or all of that guys. Who even uses that by the way in 2024? Just saying. Like these are all still running 24 seven in the background. So therefore I made a whole entire tool where you can just simply press here one, click under enter and it's going to fully disable all of these here. The coolest part about this is that I also built in an actual revert function. So therefore if you don't like it or you want to revert it, just simply type two and it's going to go back to your Windows default settings, which is amazing. The second tool which I built is also kind of to like cleaning up to your PC where you have like temporary files, something like you can press here one and it's going to delete all of the temporary files and something like prefetch files, which you can also delete. Then you can also do something like remove Windows delivery optimization files with eight, which you can also do here. It's going to take a little bit longer, but they're also clean or something like the DirectX shader cache, which is also pretty important to do once in a while since having interrupt the DirectX shader cache can cause stutter in games like Valorant. Of course, guys, I'm a YouTuber with 130k subscribers, but I just want to showcase you that of course, all of these here are safe to use. They're all also, by the way, open source. So therefore, if you want to edit them, you can see completely everything which is in these scripts directly. I just made them basically for this video, I gotta say. So therefore, yeah, they're pretty easy to use. And you can, by the way, find them on discord.gg slash listraps, guys. It's a discord with over 130,000 active people. And all you gotta do is search up the performance packs channel, which you can also, by the way, find here in this small menu, just somebody tap in the performance and then you can find it. And in here, I'm going to post it after I actually uploaded this video. These are two pretty cool tools, in my opinion. The disable user services one you can delete, of course, afterwards and the clean cache file, I kind of just like keep on my desktop because like I use it actually like once in a while, you know, to just like clean up my PC. 